Hey everybody, welcome back to Barbecue Bob Biggs. You guys have some deer in your freezer? We do. We're gonna take that deer, we're gonna make jalapeno cheddar cheese sausage. If you guys wanna see how we do this, come along with us, stay tuned. All right, we got our pork butts out of the freezer. Remember, it, they don't have to be thawed all the way. These are still a little bit frozen. We'll get them out and get them cut up. And then we're gonna go ahead and put them back in the freezer until we're ready to get them ground. That way they are as cold as possible. The thing about pork butt when you do grind it is if that fat gets a little bit warm, you'll end up with a bunch of smeared fat. So let me get in here and show you how we're gonna cut this up. All right, we got the pork butt portion of this all cubed out. As you can see, for my grinder, that's what size that, that I can run through it. If yours is a little bit smaller than mine is, I got a one horsepower meet your maker, and uh, it'll grind through that like nothing. So we're gonna go ahead and get this put back into the freezer. Some of this fat, as you can tell on some of it, is getting a little bit warm. And when it gets warm, it starts to get a little bit greasy. And we don't wanna make sure we have a bunch of smeared mess as we grind this. We want a smooth grind coming through this. The deer meat, it's already in cubes. As we process the deer, we cubed it out and vacuum sealed it. So we'll get five pounds of this pork butt out into the freezer and we'll bring you guys back for the grind. All right, like I said, the deer meat was already cubed out when we processed the deer. We thawed it out enough to get it broken apart. So I'm just gonna break it apart. Get all this separated. We're gonna go ahead and throw this back into the freezer as well to get it semi-frozen again. And then uh, we'll get it all thrown together and ground up. All right, to make this jalapeno cheddar deer sausage, we ordered from PS Seasonings some 498B, which is the smoked sausage seasoning, and it also comes with a maple cure. We also got some dehydrated jalapenos. You're welcome to use new if you want. The dehydrated seems to work real good for us. And then we got a couple of pounds of the high temp cheddar cheese. So we're gonna get the rest of this deer and the rest of this pork ground up. We'll bring you guys back to season it up. All right, we're ready to get this ground up. As you can see on the horn here, it has frost on it. We put this in to the freezer about an hour ago. You want this as cold as possible, because like we said before, if that pork gets a little bit warm, it'll start to smear, and it really getting, doesn't give you a crisp grind. So we're gonna go ahead and get this deer and this pork in this grinder and uh, get it ground up. Just put a little bit in here first and get it started. This thing just tears through whatever you put in it. So usually you don't even need the stuffer. All right, we'll bring y'all back when we're done. All right, we got the first grind done. As you can tell, it's still pretty chunky. We switched out the die. While we were doing that, we put it back in the freezer for about five, 10 minutes. Uh, if you don't have a big enough freezer to do that, you can just throw it into a cooler with some ice, be fine. Uh, now we're just gonna run this through this second grind again. All right, on this jalapeno cheddar deer sausage, our mix ratio is two parts deer or two parts venison, whatever kind of venison that you're using, to one part pork butts. So for this recipe, we have 10 pounds of deer to five pounds of pork butt. So we got the first grind done. We're gonna go ahead and get that second grind done. We'll bring you guys back when it's time to mix it up. All right, now we got it ground up. We're gonna get the seasonings in it. Like we said before, the PS seasoning kits are for 25 pounds. We only have 15. So the best way to do this and to measure it properly is to use grams. So we took the total of the grams that were in the packages, divided it by 25, and then times it back by 15, and then we measured it out by that. So we have those measured out now. We're gonna go ahead and get the meat into the meat mixer and get this thing mixed together. You know, the one good thing about using those tub liners is just being able to just uh, take your meat and dump it in. We'll get the meat dumped in here. So if you don't have a meat mixer, you can use by hand. I have several videos that where we just use by hand, but uh, got a meat mixer here. This thing holds 20 pounds. Uh, got 15 pounds in here. We're gonna get this mixed up. So the first thing that we're gonna put in is the cure. And we have the maple cure and it says to add it to water. So we're gonna add it to that one pound of water is what it said. Get that mixed up real good. Then we'll go on in with that. Then we have the 
seasoning mix. Go on in with that. And we'll get that mixed together. And we'll end up mixing this for about five to six minutes. So we'll bring you guys back when we got this part mixed together. All right, we've been mixing it for about five minutes. What we're looking for is a consistency that when you make a patty there, just like that, make a patty that it stays. You want that sticky consistency. So we got it where we want it there. So now it's time to add in the cheese and the jalapenos. So with the jalapenos, we're only going in with a quarter of a pound. Uh, my family doesn't like them real hot. You can adjust this however you want to adjust it. Remember, these are dehydrated, so they will expand a little bit and definitely add some flavor to it. So we'll go in with those. Then we're gonna add two pounds of high temp cheddar cheese. And we wanna use high temp so it doesn't just melt all the way away. As soon as you get it warm, you want it to hold up to about 150, 160 degrees and start melting before it, the melt point is different. And so we got a pound there. We'll rotate this a little bit. And then we'll add that other pound in. Since these are dry ingredients, we'll go ahead and mix those in and we'll test it again to make sure that we have the consistency we want. If we need a little bit of moisture, we'll add a little bit more water. So we'll get this mixed up now, bring you right back. After adding that cheese and adding that jalapeno, it had dried it out a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and add probably about a quarter, a cup to half a cup of water and see how we are after that. All right, we got that mixed up. Let's check our consistency. See if we got a patty on our hand. It holds. We're good. So we're gonna take this patty, we're gonna go ahead and, and cook it up and see what the flavors are and see if there's anything that we wanna to add to this. Remember, these are just starter kits. Sometimes your taste differs. So I'm gonna check it out, see what I need to add, and I'll go from there. I'll let you know. All right, so we got one of these pieces fried up like a little patty here. We're gonna go ahead and take a bite of that. It's very good. It's got a little bit of bite to it. So if you're using that dehydrated jalapeno, go lightly on it. Don't put a little bit at a time because I tell you, just a quarter of a pound, has a little bit of kick. Even with that little bit of jalapeno, you can definitely taste it. This is gonna be some good sausage. It seems like that mix is perfect. It has the right amount of salt with that jalapeno in there. It definitely got some, some hot flavor to it. Don't need any more pepper. So we're gonna get this cased up. All right, stuff the sausage today. We're using a Meet Your Maker five pound stuffer. We do have the larger one, but I tell you the larger one is a little bit harder to use by yourself. So if you don't have one of these and you're looking for one, if you do it with somebody, get the larger one. I tell you, it's a lot easier because you don't have to stuff it as often. But if you're doing it by yourself, as far as control, you have to stuff this more often. This five pound one works magnificently. So we're gonna take this five pounder and get this going. Something to keep in mind when you are stuffing sausage, air is your enemy. You don't wanna have air pockets in your sausage. So you make sure that when you do put the meat in here, that you put it in there and try to get all the air out as possible. So what I like to try to do is just take it and smush it into the back corner and then down to the front and then continue that as I add more to it. Because ultimately what's gonna happen is that plunger is gonna come down and it's gonna push it down. And if there is air in it, it's gonna push that air out and you can hear it right there coming out. It'll push that air out into your sausage and then you'll have air pockets in your sausage that you'll have to deal with. One thing we didn't show you how to do, but we did do is soak our casings. First, you wanna take your casings. If, you, if they come out of a package, you wanna rinse them. And depending on, on your casings, these, you wanna soak for about 35 to 40 minutes in warm water. And then you wanna change that water out and soak them for another 30 to 45 minutes. Makes them really soft, makes them easy to use, and it gets a lot of that salt off there. So we're just gonna dribble a little water on the outside of this pan to make the sausage come and slide around real easily. Get our stuffer in. We're gonna bring that meat, if you can see this meat coming out now, we're gonna bring it out right to the end. And then we're gonna back this off. See how it stops? Then we're gonna take this casing, 
We're gonna find the end. So once you get the end of your casing expanded, just put your thumb and your finger in there, dip it in the water. And what that'll do is flush the inside of that and straighten it out too at the same time. You see that bulge coming through there? And we just wanna send a couple of those through it. Done deal, pull it out. Take a little bit of water around the, your horn. And you take that and it goes right on. So you just wanna put pressure here on the side and then it'll go right on. Once we get the end, we'll just tie a knot on the end here. Push that towards the end. Then we'll start casing it up. So when you're casing this, all you wanna do is put a little bit of pressure on the bottom and on the top, and then put enough pressure on it so that you have the size that you're looking for. Too small, won't cook all that great. It'll look funny and it'll be shrunk. Too big, you have the possibility of blowouts and, and for it to be splitting. So there's a happy medium in there and you just have to play with it and get some experience doing it to figure that out. Then when you get the end, you just pull it off, spin it up, tie it off. It's one down, this one's not very long, that's for sure, but that's what the, the casing was. So on my pan, I have it marked out to about six and a half inches or so. So all we're gonna do is take this, put it there, squeeze on this end. Then we're gonna squeeze on this end. Then we're just gonna take it, spin it. Same thing, mark it out, squeeze on this end, squeeze on this end, mark it out. If you got a loose one like that end one is, you can always push it together, give it a couple more twists. There you go, that's the first batch. So we'll get the rest of this done and we'll bring you back for the rest. So if you do end up with air bubbles, just, I use a pin, they make a, a, a pricker tool. I just will pop it a couple times with the pin, let that air out. Just make sure you do that as you go along. Simple as that. All right, now that we got them all cased up, we're gonna put them in the refrigerator overnight to allow them to one, let that cure work and two to develop that pellicle on the outside of it to take the smoke so we'll get these in the refrigerator going in there overnight we'll see you guys tomorrow when we put these on the smoker see you then all right so this jalapeno cheddar sausage has been in the refrigerator overnight and we're going to cut it apart get it linked up and get it ready to smoke i'll bring you in for that so once it dries out it's really easy you just take them spread them apart like that take a pair of scissors and cut it apart then you just lay it out just like we are here on a smoker tray, or you can put it directly onto the smoker. So we're gonna get the rest of these cut apart, get them ready, get that pit up to temp, and we'll see y'all out the smoker. All right, we got them all linked up, you got them ready to go. Put them on these smoker racks to make them easy to carry and easy to take off. If you don't have some of those, you need to pick some up. I use them all the time. Links in the description below. Uh, got the yoder coming up to temperature. We're gonna take you out there and get these things on. All right, so the YS640 is up to temp. We're gonna start out at 150 degrees, and then we'll run that for a couple hours. Then we'll bump it up to 170, 175. We're looking for a finishing temp of about 150 degrees to get these sausages off and get them into a bath of ice water. So we're gonna get these on at 150 degrees and get them started. All right, we're up to temp. Let's get this thing loaded up. This should fill this pit up, I'm sure here. All right, we've got them all loaded. I'm gonna have one here that's gonna be the sacrificial sausage here. That way we can tell when we get that internal to about 150 degrees or so. So we'll put that over here on the side. Close this down for a couple hours and we'll bring you guys back when we check on them. All right, the sausage has been smoking for about two hours at 150 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and kick it up to 170 degrees and check in, see how they're doing. All right, they've been rolling along at 150. Oh yeah, they're looking good, getting that red hue to them. Let me bring you in and let you look at them. Getting that good red hue. Yes, they are looking good. 
We're gonna go ahead and kick that temperature up to about 170 or so for about an hour, see where we're at then. If they're not completely done at 150 degrees, we got a temperature in there. We're gonna go ahead and go to 200 after that. So let's see where we're at after this next hour, kicking it up to 170. All right, see you guys in about an hour. All right, so after four hours, these sausages are done. We're gonna get them pulled off and get them in an ice bath to get them to quit cooking. So we'll get that done now. All right, these things are done. We've got an ice bath prepared here. Now we're just gonna get them pulled off. Oh, they look good. Let me get you in there and let you look at them. Beautiful red U. Oh yeah. Let's get them out of here on the ice bath. We'll get them cooled down, then we'll bring one out, fire it up, get a taste test. All right, we got this jalapeno cheddar deer sausage done. Let me bring you in here, let's cut it up and give it a taste. So after we cooled it down, we cooked it at about 300 degrees for about 25 minutes or so, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, until the internal temperature was around 150, 155 degrees. So let's get in here and cut this open and see what it looks like. Look at that. Wow. Color looks great. Let's see what this thing looks like. Still really juicy. You can see the juice flowing out of it. You got the cheese, got the jalapeno. It looks real good. Yeah, it turned out good. Let's get a taste of this. You see the cheese in it. Man, that jalapeno really rehydrated really well. Let's get a taste of it. Bottles up. Mmm. Mmm. You can just definitely taste that cheese flavor. The jalapeno rehydrated real well. I'm glad I didn't put any more in it. I tell you, it's got enough kick to it. Very good. You guys give this a shot. If you got any deer laying around the house, get it done. Mm. Catch you on the next cook.